and welcome to our Sunfish ERP demo. Today, we want to go through four of the main business processes of our solution. Uh, therefore, we will be using different people and their job tasks in the system. Uh, and this way, we cover flows and sales, inventory, purchase, and finance. And we will see how they are linked with each other. Our story starts with uh, sales manager Irene, who will log into the system and review the sales for the company this quarter. She will compare it with the previous one and see if the, if the performance is generally on target. Once Irene logged into the software, she is greeted by her dashboard. She has customized her dashboard with a lot of trackers that help her monitor the sales performance in the company. For example, she has sales trend indicators on the right that show her just how low this quarter's performance is compared to the previous quarter. Uh, in the middle of her dashboard, she has a complete sales uh, analysis graph, which not only shows her in one picture which item categories are selling and what volumes and in what values, but also how each of her sales uh, person is contributing to the sales performance. In the company. So here she sees that her staff Tessani and Esther are performing way below Christine. However, as the data is for the current year, she will follow up by changing the period to the last quarter to make sure that they have actually performed this badly as well or if maybe there is a, is a little different outcome. So she switches uh, to the past quarter and unfortunately sees her first analysis confirmed. Tessani hasn't um, sold anything in the past quarter and Esther's contribution is very low. But yet again, she will uh, look at the last months to see if there's any any change but as she switches to the last months she also sees a confirmation of Esther and Tessani not contributing to the company sales at all so she calls them both and tells them should they have to improve significantly their sales until the end of the quarter our story now switches to Esther having just received the phone call from Irene she is pushing one of her new prospects to close the sales uh, we will follow her through the steps of adding a new customer, generating quotations and sales orders, as well as later on in the demo, we will see her adding the invoice for the sales order. Esther will first start to log into the software and review if the company has any sales promotions this month. Sales promotions, if available, are shown on the page uh, of sales price. So she clicks the menu item and opens it. Once the page is loaded, she sees there are a couple of promotions and she clicks today's date to find out the details. In this case, the details reveal that the promotion is not relevant for the item she sells to her new customer. So with that in mind, she simply calls the new prospect and gives them a flat discount of 5% if they send the PO within two days. With the customer agreeing to the offer discount, Esther will send them over a quotation. Before she can do that, she has to submit the new customer data to the system, which she is doing through the customer menu item. Once she clicks the menu item, an index page opens showing a list of all the customers in the system. She can simply click the plus button on the right top to add this new customer. The system is asking for a lot of information. However, only a few are required to fill in and for the purposes of the demo, we will concentrate on those. The required fields for adding the customer is category, code, name, field, and the contact name. However, in a real life scenario, you would submit as many data as you could. Once you filled in the customer details, please note that the system is asking for further information. That information relates to the shipping and the billing address that can be the same or different and they are the only other required fields in here you can also provide additional information regarding the linked accounts on that page you choose under which chart of account you book sales revenues accruals sales returns and so on if you already have you can in this page also submit the bank information or you add it later once you are doing the invoicing. Should you forget any required information, the system will notify you and not let you save the data until a 
until the mandatory information is entered. Once you're done, just click the Submit button to save your new data. After saving the new customer data, Esther is returned to the index page. From here, she can access the next menu of quotation to actually prepare and send the quotation to the new customer. Once she clicked the menu item, she will land on the index page for quotation. And here she can click the plus button to open a new form. Inside the form, there's two parts to the quotation. The first part is the general information where she submits the customer name, the salesperson's name, the currency, as well as the expiry date of the quotation. And in the second part of the quotation, she has two tabs for selecting the to be quoted items as well as some accounting details. Clicking the select item link will open a pop-up page with all your inventory items. Simply click the checkbox on the left to mark the items that you wish to quote for. You can also use a filter to uh, locate the items you're looking for quicker. Based on your filter criteria, the system will only display results matching your specifications. From the narrow down list of items, continue to click those that are relevant for the quotation. When you're done, click the select button to transfer the selected inventory items to the previous page of the quotation where you can continue to edit price and quantity. Now for each item in the quotation, you replace the zeros for quantity with the actual number and then you continue to select the unit of measurement for each as well as type in the price or any discount you have promised the customer or that is given through the event system. You can see that as you type in the information for quantity, discount and price for each item, the system automatically calculates the total and grand total amounts for the customer. Once we submitted the pricing information, we switch to the accounting tab. Under the accounting tab, the user can select the taxes that need to be added or deducted from the item purchase and select the cost center under which the transaction should be booked. The tax has been previously set up in the system settings and can be customized to your country specifics. They're just being selected here. Also note that the fields on the bottom again change as you enter the values. The system calculates the total tax and tax deduction amounts and arrives as the customer payment. Once you've done with all the information, um, simply click the submit button to save the quotation. Oops, the system is telling us we missed some information. So let's go back and enter it. Um, also noticing a little bit of a price mix up between the server and the installation services. So let's uh, switch those numbers around as well. Okay, uh, once we fixed everything, we're going to resubmit the form and send it to approval. The approver of the quotation is Irene, so let's re-log in as her. On Irene's dashboard on top of the page is a bell that we click to see all outstanding requests. The request can be unfolded and checked for details by clicking the link, or in a short version, you can simply use the icons on the bottom for accepting, rejecting, or revising the quotation. All right, with Irene's approval done, Esther can actually send the quotation to the customer. And assuming a positive response, our story switches back to Esther and she logs into the system a couple of days later to generate the sales order. Again, the plus opens the new form. Inside the sales order form, note the document source. We're linking it to the quotation Esther previously sent to the customer. That has the benefit of the system later retrieving the details from the quotation for the sales order. Other than that, she is selecting the customer that this SO belongs to. She's selecting her own name as a salesperson and attaching the actual PO she received. 
When Esther clicks the document icon, she gets a specific list of quoted items for this customer from which she picks the relevant ones for the sales order. Uh, once she clicks select on those items, they will be transferred to the main page and the system retrieves the information for pricing and quantity as well as tax uh, automatically. She can make changes in either one as necessary, add miscellaneous charges like freight or courier and check the stock's availability in the stock tab. Okay, it looks like we tried to save a little too early and forgot to look at the data in tabs billing and shipping. First, we're checking the payment terms of the billing and the company name we're billing to. And in shipping, we will set the delivery date and time to measure our performance later. Once done, we will resubmit the sales order and this time it was sent successfully. The sales order again ends up with Irene for approval and she follows the same step basically that we have demonstrated before. You'll note that this is a very simple um, approval process. The system, however, does support more complex rules including sequential and parallel processing, single group, multi-tiered approval processes, as well as cross-functional approval lines, alternate approvers, replacement approvers um, based on position, level of supervisors, or employee ID. And users can also set up very automatic rejection and approval rules based on certain if and when conditions. With the SO done, we're leaving the sales menu for a while and switching to inventory. In inventory, our employee Employee Bootyman will help us to send the items from the sales order to the customer. He will log into the system and his first task is to check whether the stock for those items is actually available or not. As you can see, Bootyman also has a dashboard, but unlike the other two, it is customized to his jobs and responsibilities in the system. One of them would be that he needs to make sure that his best selling items are available for sales and the graphs below minimum stock and best seller items definitely help him with that. For example, if you look at the wireless HP mouse red, it is one of his best selling items, but it also shows up in the below minimum stock graph, which means this kind of information allows him to make the reordering of this item a priority. Other than that, he has a menu on the left that allows him to add more trackers to the dashboard. He can simply pull it from the left menu and drag it into the center of his page. In context of our story, Booty's first task is to check the availability of stocks for Esther's sales order. He does that with item list. The item list is basically the main page of maintaining the inventory in the company. It holds all the master data, including item name, category, currency, dimension, measurements, and so on. And among others, it also holds the information of incoming, outgoing, and on-hand quantity. For our first SO item, the mouse, we see that the on-hand quantity is 23, which is enough for our 10 that we have to deliver to the customer. And now we check the server using the filter. And here also we see the on-hand quantity is 10, which means it is enough for our fulfillment of the sales order. With the stocks all in order, Bootyman can directly proceed to issuing the goods. He opens the inventory transaction main menu and chooses good issue to send the items. Again, clicking the plus form opens the new form, which in this case starts with two questions. Here you click yes to the issue based on an order. And in the second field, you select from the three options, the sales order as a reference document. Once you click submit, you get to the actual form where you have to submit the details. Let's start off with uh, selecting the customer. The customer selection will impact the next field of reference document, which will only give us approved SOs for the selected customer. In continuation of the automation, the system will retrieve the data from that document and fills in the delivery date as well as the delivery quantities for this SO. Note how we have a superb three days ahead of schedule performance. And let's continue with the required fields that we need to fill in. Let's proceed with the item section. The system allows partial delivery in case you don't have enough stocks on hand. In this case, you just 
change the quantity of the items that can be delivered to the number that is available. In our case, we already verified we have enough stock, so we click the inventory tab to select the warehouse from which we deliver. You see that there's two warehouses available. Uh, the system would allow you to send the items from multiple warehouses if one doesn't have all the stock, but in our case, the Belize one has everything, so we just select this one to send the items. When we're done, then we click the submit button to finish the shipping. Let's quickly check the approval status of the request on the index page. And we see that Bootyman was set up as only relevant approver and it's already done. This means also that the items are now on the way to the customer. All right, now let's look at another important inventory task, which is reordering minimum stock items. And for this one, we use the reorder sheet. The reorder sheet is a truly helpful page to speed up the reordering process. Not only shows it to the inventory staff, only the items that are violating the below minimum stock rules, which means they know all other items are okay, but also it shows them a recommendation of what quantity to reorder, taking in consideration not only the minimum maximum stock rules, but also what is incoming and what is already on stock. The reorder process then is simple. Just click the item to reorder, go with the recommended number or change it, and then click process. Uh -huh. This system notifies us that the request was only saved as a draft, which means we need to go to purchase requisition and send it from here to approval. Um, Budiman is looking at the details, uh, finds them all in order, so we can click submit to send it. All right, now that we landed on the index page, let's quickly review who are the approvers of this purchase requisition request. For that, we click the request status link unverified, and when the pop-up opens, unfold the details. In here, we see that the approvers are Romeo from the purchase department and Afiani from finance. This means Bootyman is done for now, and it leads us to the next part of our story, where we review some of the workflows in the purchase module. We will now log in as Romeo and he will start with approving the purchase requisition request and then after that gather and compare a couple of vendor quotations prior to making a purchase decision that will result in creating a purchase order. After the login, Romeo's first task is to approve the purchase requisition request. He clicks the active request icon and in this case we skip over the details and simply click accept. So now let's assume it's a couple of days later and Romeo has received a couple of uh, vendor quotations for the mouse. He will record them to the system and is using the purchase quotation quotation menu. Once we're on the index page, we follow the same system logic of clicking the plus button to open a new form. We will be adding three vendor quotations to have nice data for the later comparison. We start with selecting the vendor from whom the quote is and then continue to relate this quotation to our mouse purchase requisition document, which we select from the bottom of the field. Once we selected the reference document, the system fills in automatically on the bottom the purchase item and quantity. We continue with the due date, which means until this offer is valid, and we set the quotation currency and type in the actual quotation number. Now let's move on to the item and pricing section where we start with the number of days until which the delivery is promised. And then we type in the item price that the vendor quoted us, including any discounts. The system automatically updates the totals as we enter these data. Once we're done, we switch to the accounting tab and put in the tax on these items. Again, the system updates the totals with the tax and Okay, let's also put in the forgotten response time to inquiry because it's an item for the comparison later. And when we're done, then we save this quotation. For our second quotation, we'll change a few details around in order to have a nice comparison later. We choose a different vendor, of course, but the same purchase requisition document will also give this vendor a longer response time to our inquiry as well as a longer delivery time because they're out of stock. Um, the item price we make slightly higher than before but also give a higher discount. Then at the end we submit the text again which stays the same before clicking submit.
Our third vendor shall be new and not yet in the system, so we'll be using the quotation page to add the new vendor details first. Adding a new vendor is similar as adding a new customer. The fields are almost the same. Uh, again, the system has a few required fields. The rest is optional, so we will concentrate on those and is optional. So we will concentrate on those and fill in the category, name, select the industry field, enter the lead and response time and the contact name. And this time we don't forget to type in the shipping and the billing address. With the new data having been saved, we will return to the quotation form where we can select this new. As for the rest of the quotation, we also link it to the same purchase requisition and currency. Uh, the system already filled in the response and the lead time because we added those data in the vendor add one. This vendor we will give the highest price and also the highest discount just to have a nice range for the comparison. The rest remains the same and we can save the quotation when done. All right, now that we have our three quotations, Romeo will compare the vendors in terms of delivery time, price and discount. For that, he opens the quotation comparison sheet. And once open, we first select the requisition code that our quotations were linked to previously. The system again will only allow us to pick quotation options which we submitted directly to this document. And they are the three we just added. Once Romeo presses is the compare button. He can see which vendor has the best item price, which has the lowest or highest total price, who can deliver the fastest and so on. The system ranks the vendors from green to red, which means from best to worst option. This is a pretty good overview of criteria to make a purchase decision. But on top of that, it also tells Romeo if he bought from a vendor before and if yes, how many items for what price. So ultimately, if and when he decides to buy the items, he only needs to click the radio button of his preferred option and generates the purchase order from this page. Now let's open the purchase order menu item to check that the PO has indeed been generated. Okay, we see it on the index page, but if we scroll to the right, we see it's a draft only. So let's open it and send it to the proper approval workflow. Inside, Romeo can check the details of the purchase order and make any changes if necessary. He can also add charges like fried or courier in miscellaneous and finishes with submit when he's done. On the index page, let's now quick check the approval status of the order and we see it's already done. So now all we have to do is wait for the shipment's arrival. Now let's assume it's three days later and the shipment has arrived. Our staff booting man from inventory is going back into the system to record the good receipt. He's opening the inventory transaction good receipt menu and opens the form with the plus button. We have again two questions to answer before getting to the actual form. After the date and time entry, we select the vendor who sent the goods. After that, we select the reference document and selecting the reference document speeds up the whole recording process since the data is being filled in on the bottom and Bootyman only needs to check the received item quantity versus the promised one. And once he verified, select the warehouse in which the goods are stored. After saving the good receipt, we check on the index page the approval status of the document and we find out Bootyman is the only relevant approver, which means no further action needs to be taken. Booty's last job in our demo story is to call Romeo from Purchase to let him know everything went smooth with the vendor and to check on the rating. We now switch the story back to Romeo who will log in to the system once more to check the set rating and to create the purchase invoice. First Romeo checks on the ranking. He opens the vendor menu and then the more detailed information and in the form is a little selection field for the ranking and we see 
see it's already set to good. With no changes there, he proceeds to the purchase invoice. He will generate it for finance so they can pay the vendor. The steps of creating a purchase invoice are similar to the sales invoice process. You select the vendor first and then reference the invoice to either a purchase order or a good receipt. Romeo chooses the latter and then quickly verifies the currency of this invoice. He then selects the actual good receipt document that is the basis for this invoice. Using the reference document has the benefit of a speedier invoice creation as the system automatically retrieves the data from this good issue or the purchase order and all Romeo has to do is to check it and adjust it if necessary. He can also fill in additional costs like freight or other duties and check the taxes. Um, based on whatever entries he makes, the system updates the invoice total, tax or deductions and also the final payment amount. The last step is to check the due date of the invoice, which should match the payment terms we have with the vendor, and then we can save it. All right, let's check the index page to confirm that the invoice was added and also to see if it needs to be approved or not. Yeah, it's here. Uh, it has a fully approved status and also a not yet paid payment status. With that, Romeo's job in our demo is done. As his last task, he calls Aviani from finance to ask him to settle the vendor invoice with the next company payment cycle. This ends the demonstration of purchase and inventory processes and their correlation for the purpose of the story. This still leaves us with Esther and her sales invoice. She will be doing that now because the customer just called her to say the shipment has arrived. After the login, she opens sales invoice and clicks the plus to open the invoice ad form. First off, she selects customer Promodori for whom the invoice is. Then she can reference the invoice to either an SO or good issue and she chooses the second option. Then she needs to specify the currency before selecting the good issue reference document. The system will only give her options that belong to her previous choices. In this case, it will only give her a good issue that belongs to Promodori in Indonesian currency. She can then and proceed to pick the items for the invoice. The system retrieves the data from that good issue document and she can select the item she wants to invoice now. We simply go ahead and invoice all three of them. After she selected the three items for the invoice, the system automatically displays the data on the bottom of the main form. The details here come from Bootyman's data entries in the good issue. And now the invoice creation process becomes very efficient because Esther only needs to ver verify the details and make changes if and where necessary. She needs to check the tax and she can enter miscellaneous charges in case there's any additions. Once she's done with that, she will check the billing and the shipping address and also make sure that the due date of the invoice matches the 30 days payment terms. Once she's done, she can submit and save. Ah, look at that. Esther is also the approver of the invoice, which means this process is now fully completed. And with that, Esther's part in our story ends. She calls Aviandi to let him know there will be a customer payment. And she calls Irene to tell her her performance improved. Once Irene logged in, she sees that all her salespeople have been quite productive. Sales are up to 6.2 billion rupiah right now, compared to 240 million we started with. Esther alone increased her sales to 5.1 billion, and she is the star performer right now. When Irene checks the current months, she sees that Esther's great service sales volume is the main reason for her strong performance. This brief look at the sales development ends our sales story, which leads us to the last review of a few finance processes to finish up our demo story.
Avyandi is our finance user. He logs in at the end of the month to pay our demo vendor Putri Kaya for the mouse and to record a customer payment. In this step, he will also use the cash flow projection menu to see what invoices are outstanding in general. On his dashboard, Avyandi tracks items related to his accounting jobs. Important to him are the receivables and payable totals as well as the cost and the profit loss. Uh, but he also tracks the budget and more specifically, who are the vendors we owe payments and what customers uh, need to pay us. On the left side, there are more items he could track. He can simply scroll through the list, click the item he wants and drag it to the middle of the page. Moving on to his first task, Afiani opens the cash flow projection. The cash flow projection gives him an overview of all the incoming and outgoing payments on a monthly basis. The graph compares how much money is coming in versus how much money needs to be paid. The bottom of the graph then displays the actual numbers of the incoming and outgoing money for every single month. Uh, each of the numbers is a link that when clicked shows the specific names of vendors or customers that make up the value. Seeing Putrikaya on the list of vendors that should be paid, uh, Aviandi opens the book entry transaction form for bank payments. He will record their payment now so it can be processed. When the new page opens, the system asks Aviandi whether he wants to spend or receive money and for what purpose. Paying a vendor means spending money and the purpose is the invoice payment. Let's start with picking the vendor, which in this case is Putrikaya. Based on this selection, the system will later give us only unpaid invoices related to this vendor. Then next, select the bank account from which the payment will be made. We are now ready to choose the payment details. By clicking the invoice document icon, we get a list of five unpaid Putrikaya invoices. They separately display the invoice and tax values and the date of when they were created. Avyangi can choose which ones to pay. Once he selected them, uh, the system transfers the data to the payment form. And you may recall that the data matches the ones from the purchase invoice Romeo had created earlier. Avyangi can now enter the actual payment amount. To keep this simple, we pay this invoice as is without any exchange rate fluctuations or other variations. As he types in the goods and service amount, and then the tax amount, the total payment field keeps adjusting automatically. Since we are only entering these two values, we can click Submit Payment once it's done. Now let's check the approval status of the payment transaction. We do that back on the index page and after scrolling to the right, we see the status is fully approved, meaning Aviandi was the only approver that mattered here. With the vendor payment in process, Aviandi goes back to record the customer payment. He opens again the bank transaction form, but this time chooses receive money. And again, it's based on an invoice. From here on, the steps are pretty much the same as for the vendor payment. He chooses first the customer and then the bank account where the money was received. Again, the system displays only invoices the selected customer owes us. And Aviandi chooses from that list the ones that that have actually been paid. The system retrieves the details from the invoice that Esther had previously entered and Avyandi now only types in the actual amount received. Any differences between the invoiced amount and the actual amount need to be recorded in the COA details. This may occur when bank charges have been deducted or if there are exchange rate fluctuations for other currency invoices. Typing the amount number again adjusts the total payment field automatically and the click on submit saves the receipt transaction form. And one last quick check on the index page, and we see that the approval has been fully given. With these last few clicks, the cycle for our demo story closes. The feature we have shown are very basic, and our ERP, of course, has a lot more functionalities and reports that we didn't touch because of the time constraints. Thank you for watching anyways, and please contact us if you would like to see a proper detailed demo of the software.